and he just passed his ringleader in. So he might just do that with one of his extra war chiefs, trying to try take down one of the Starmagoyfs. You can always use it as chump blocker as well, make sure you resolve it that way. What would have been interesting is if he didn't draw the Pyromancer and still made the attack mm -hmm. to see if... Uh, the incinerator you mean? Yeah, the, if he didn't draw the incinerator, still still made bluffed the... Bluffed Yeah, bluffed the incinerator. That is a play Mike Torian would love. It's a, it's a good one. Yeah. Who do we see? Oh, Cedric made a great bluff like that. Bluffing harm's way to, to give him exactly lethal with a fetch. Looks like Nicholas is stepping away from the table to consult with head judge James Elliott. Nicholas already has one warning for slow play um, from the Burnett match. Um, right. So um, James Elliott cautioned him that he should probably play a little bit faster so that he doesn't get a second slow play warning in this time eight. Right. I mean, he's still got a, a match to play after this, so if he gets a warning here, then the, the third one's uh, going to be worth a, exactly one one game. Exactly, exactly one third of of a match of magic. That is another haymaker for Billy Nichols, a third Tarmogoyf coming out there. Of course, you're talking about game losses. We've already seen one game loss cost a player the finals in what looked like a otherwise match uh, locked up game. That was when Tom Ross managed to win the Dallas right, Legacy right. Open. I remember that. Can come back to haunt you. You got to play I mean, tight even when you get tired. I mean, Tom Ross is just you know. Stared into his opponent's soul and controlled his mind a little. He got a lot of heat for that because people said he was just griefing the guy playing and just hoping he get a game loss. And he had he actually had plenty of outs. Yeah, I mean, he just, the fact that he didn't draw a graveyard removal in a turbo land ma or a forty three land match it forever and ever and ever was just yeah. improbable. Well, a third Tarmogoyf joins the team. Should have splashed for Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Was, uh, that Jun deck was uh, around would be pretty good against those Termagos. It would. People were pretty uh, getting pretty upset about Jun winning all the time, but we could <laughs> take solace so in the good. fact <laughs> that uh, it will only win. It will win no more than fifty percent of the Star City Games Open events this weekend. So yeah. it's not that good. <laughs> you really want me to build a legacy jump list? It'll be sick. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the, uh, the chat forums are filled with people arguing about the Eye of Ugin. <laughs> Stand topic, guys. We're talking legacy here. <laughs> here's, here's your uh, corpses back. Yes. Thanks for playing. Lots of time ago. Oh, it looks like you drew a ringleader. Ooh. That's a good one. Isn't he just running out there right now? He's got a... Yes, yeah, so this, this is when the target moves were attacking. No, no, no. You're still in your turn. You never. Yeah, it's your second main phase. You don't get to untap and draw a card. I get tired too. I was having an argument the other day with some friends, uh, trying to figure out what the best blue two-drop of all time was. I said it was Tarmogoyf. They made the argument that it was actually yeah, Narcomoeba. Your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, it's, it, if you can count Tarmogoyf, it's obviously Tarmogoyf. Right? Tarmogoyf is clearly the best blue two. But if you time. if you're talking about blue cards, or like only blue cards, then then obviously not. Tarmogoyf is practically only a blue card. I'm gonna go with Urtas familiar. Ringleader makes. That's a bold decision. <laughs> or, uh, I think it's noble. Second war chief. To be wrong about something. The ringleader costs two mana. Oh, Sting Scourge are achieved in. Wow. That was a pretty good turn of events. Wow, Billy Nichols is, is dead. Unless he has something. Which we don't think he, he does. He's only at 8 life. His Sting Scourger gets his, his one blocker. Chieftain pumps up all the guys. Yeah, Billy's still at 8 life, but... Uh... Nicholas better do this math fast before he gets another order. That's true. 
Let's play this thing, Scourger, first. Deli Nickel's gonna lose to an ambitious attack. <laughs> <laughs> now he's gonna lose to a a very good draw and then a very good uh, ringleader flip. Let's put the chieftain out there too, right? And just yeah. Go on. Yeah. this map though. No. No. He can, he can, he can cast it, right? Cast four. He's going to take it. He needs like Smother and Blue Blast to be his two non tarmogriff cards. Yep. It, it looks like uh, that's yeah, not going to be the case. He's doing the thinking. It doesn't, it looks like he's out. That's a nervous twitch of the fingers there. That is that cold realization where you accept your fate and recognize yeah. that your tournament has come to an end. The math hasn't changed. Yep, it's yep, over. That's it. Goblins um, adding to the finals, finals of uh, the legacy portion of the Star City Games 10K Open, where he will face off with Chris Wolterick and his blue of 43 lands. Hey, hello everyone. We're just gonna wait for uh, the finals to start. Yeah. I know we're all, all of us are rather eager to get it started, so hopefully there's a minimum amount of time that we'll have to wait before it begins. It's on us. Well, at least I let you put your shirt back on. <laughs> yep. So uh, that was another. Oh, uh, pretty long match considering he's playing goblins. Would you agree? <laughs> we almost went to time again because of goblin. Agreed. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> it was a pretty long match considering it was goblins involved in it. Go goblins is really like the fast beat you down. Beat, beat, beat you down. Why can't anyone hear anything? Hello. Um, is this mic even on? Yeah. Yep, that's your mic going off. <laughs> Did someone? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, it's like, uh, it just tries to just overwhelm you and, you know, the good draw, you know, the guy draws, you just go, like, turn one, um, lackey, and then, you know, the rest is just magic, but... You know, in norm, normal cases, you want to get to four mana, play with some ringleaders, yeah. get, like, matron into more ringleaders, and just kind of grind them out with expendable one ones and two twos with abilities. Yeah. But I think this this last matchup seems like it's heavily favored for 43 lands. Could be. There's a lot of basics in the goblin deck, so... It depends, about, it depends on how many... The 43 it land yeah, it depends goblins. On, it depends on how many amazing oh, it's so drawn. 43, man, 43 land is, is pretty pretty heavily favored. Uh, Zero uh, price of progress? Tabernacle, <laughs> uh, yeah, no price of progress anywhere. That's a, that's a game changer. But um, yeah. we have uh, tabernacles and... Um, or one tabernacle and, uh, you know, intuition for left and alone tabernacle and, and uh, maze of if is a, is a pretty good package. Um, recurring Barbarian Rings uh, kills a lot of goblins, Glacial Chasm, buys a lot of time. Uh, and with the, the Teleri Wests and the uh, Intuitions, being able to find these, you know, the four, four Maze of Ith is just really good when you're, um, you know, kind of picking up the pieces. You bring in the bridge and Zeron bridge plan in this game too? This matchup too? Um, I, I, I mean, it's possible. It, we saw uh, earlier, we don't know if Chris Walterk knows this, but uh, Nicholas has no way to kill an artifact. 
unless that artifact is white and he can anarchy it. He he has no 